Oh, all right, this is a video that is inspired by Gerundism's challenge, No Star Trails on the Globe. So here's my entry, Modeling Star Trails for a Globe Earth. So the terms of the challenge, as I understand them, is you, uh, you got to obtain a globe, put a camera on it, have some stars, have Polaris on the ceiling, and then spin them. And what does the camera record? So we're going to go through these uh, step by step. Let's first talk about my design criteria. The first thing is I eliminated the tilt because we're not talking about the seasons. We're not talking about orbiting the sun. We're just talking about one night's star trails. So there's no need for the tilt. Uh, next is we're just taking long exposure still photos. You know, just star trails on one photo. Uh, not, I didn't record any video. Uh, the last thing is I, I selected a small earth to minimize the parallax being that we are doing this, this test in a... Uh, in a room, um, so the stars are actually much, much, much closer than they would be in the heliocentric model. So I wanted to minimize uh, parallax by picking a small Earth. So people may, may say, uh, oh, you fail. You didn't have the 23 and a half degree tilt. If you, if you want to tilt, literally just tilt your head to one side because that is actually how you can picture the tilt of the Earth compared to the stars. All right. As far as the stars and the Earth is con are concerned, there is no tilt. Uh, next thing is parallax baseline. So again, the, the bigger the Earth, the bigger the, the parallax. It, it's called the baseline. And so if we're just doing you know one night's version of star trails, um, I really wanted the parallax to be as small as possible. So I picked a very, very small Earth. Okay, so for, first step is to obtain a globe. So I stole a globe from a small child. Um, and then I decided to use a fidget spinner. And my initial idea was that I would use the bearing on the fidget spinner to give it a, a nice spin. So um, the problem is fidget spinners have a really, really good bearing. So this causes some people to become dizzy, and um, some people are more susceptible than others. Uh, as you can see, uh, just you know, just all this dizziness causes people not to think clearly, and uh, might be looking right at curvature and just still ask, "Where's the curvature?" Um, so, you know, I really don't want to confuse anybody. Um, so we didn't use the fidget spinner. Um, but anyway, now moving on. Put a camera on the globe is next. So I wanted to use a, a little GoPro because you can control it from a smartphone. You can literally control everything, the shutter speed, the, the you know, how long the exposure, uh, you know, what kind of exposure is, the, you know, the balance, uh, whether you're taking a series of shots or, or uh, a single shot. You know, just great, great uh, control. Um, so I didn't literally I did not have to touch the camera I just had my smartphone now the problem with mounting this on this little uh, foam uh, globe is that the the thing weighed more than the globe so it would be tilting over to one side and I didn't want that so I decided to take the axis of the globe the axis of rotation and then line that up with the axis of a lazy Susan so I put a globe literally right on the lazy Susan and then I was able to um, Put the camera right up next to the globe um, to to match the uh, the criteria for the challenge. You had to have a globe and you had to have a camera on the globe. So that's what I've got. The camera is right on the globe. Um, and then if you really want to picture it, the thing is the globe is just a proxy. You know, the globe is just a sphere. So if you want to imagine a slightly larger globe, and then you take a look where the camera is pointing, uh, that's basically an observer. An observer on Earth looking uh, northward. Okay, so that's kind of what the camera is capturing. All right, next we're going to put some stars on the ceiling. So my ingredients were just Christmas lights and string and thumbtacks. And so I had a, a big beam running across my ceiling that I kind of used, and I, I put a clamp on that so I could hold a little bit more weight. Um, and it looks like a hot mess, but essentially it's like a big square. Um, and the idea is that you know the the, the pattern of lights doesn't matter. I just wanted the star trails. All right, so I just kind of put the lights up any which way. Uh, and it turns out that this section right on the beam is right where uh, Polaris is going to be located. And so here's a far away version. Uh, the, the lights are about 52 inches above the Lazy Susan. You can see the Lazy Susan and the globe and the camera at the bottom of the screen. Um, and then so if I perfectly, perfectly align the axis of the globe, the axis of the Lazy Susan, uh, that is going to intersect with the beam, and that's going to be where Polaris is. And I think that is next. Next is to mark Polaris on the ceiling. So what I decided to use is a little 
um, clicker with a, which has a laser pointer from my classroom. And so I had some pennies and a rubber band. And that was going to be my uh, my laser dot. And so I just shoved it up against uh, Orion's jacket, and and that just pointed at the ceiling. And then I stuck a thumbtack in the ceiling, um, and it really glowed very and very nicely because it was one of these uh, clear thumbtacks. So it really it really reflected the laser light very well. Okay, finally is the. The, the reason why we're all here is to spin the globe in the camera and see what the camera records. Uh, and again, this whole spinning, it really causes some people distress. So if you're susceptible to spinning uh, problems, uh, please take take some precaution. Oh, uh, Dr. Zach, I just told you, because, I, I, you know, I, I know how you get confused sometimes. And, and what are you talking about, Tr Lake Truncheon Pain? Oh, oh, I get it. Okay, well, you know, consenting adults, that's that's fine. Where where was I? Um, okay, so we're going to spin the globe and the camera. So basically it was a matter of giving the Lazy Susan a spin. Um, and then as the Lazy Susan was spinning, I could snap the photos using my, my smartphone to control the camera. Okay, so what did the camera record? Well... My first attempts were not exactly successful because I had needed to work on exposure. Um, but once I got the exposure down, uh, they recorded some circular looking star trails. And there's that red dot um, for at the center. And it's interesting, the, the red dot is actually just a laser dot, you know, from my laser pointer. And all the other ones are actually Christmas lights. Um, sometimes the exposure was a little bit on the short side, but here you can you know, see my bookshelf and you can see my big head there. Um, but every time I tried it, I just gave it a spin. Um, I got circular star trails uh, centered around Polaris every single time. And you notice that I, the camera isn't exactly pointed in the same location. So I decided, you know, what if I point the camera in a really crazy angle? Um, that's one thing that comes up a lot is that people say, oh, you're going to get circular star trails only at the North Pole. Well, what if we're not only not at the North Pole, but what if we're, we're aiming our camera at a, at a really strange angle? So... You know, the, the yellow line indicates where Polaris is, the axis of the, of the globe. And then the, uh, the blue lines indicate sort of the, the, um, where the GoPro lens is going to capture. So I did want Polaris in the frame. I just didn't want it to be centered. And you'll notice that Mexico, which is that orange country um, right below the yellow United States, that's going to be in the lower left portion of the frame. And Polaris is going to be in the upper right. So what do we capture? Uh, there's one frame, and then I snapped another photo, and there's another frame. And again, Polaris is still just a red dot, not moving, and all the circular star trails are moving around it. Um, now, some people say, you know, well, you're supposed to get overlapping star trails. Well, let's see. We might be able to get some overlapping star trails. So what we need to do is uh, add some more stars. So I'm going to use a hula hoop and some string, and then a small set of these battery-operated Christmas lights that are very lightweight so that it could sort of stand on their own. And so what I did is I suspended the hula hoop from the ceiling and crisscrossed it with string and then sort of laid a bed of, of Christmas lights sort of in the hammock made by the string. All right. And uh, here's a view from the bottom looking up. And it's not really easy to see what the, uh, what the layers are, but basically we have the Lazy Susan with the globe at the bottom a layer of colorful stars, and then at the, on the ceiling we have the white stars and Polaris. And the measurements were, um, so my, my globe is 3 inches in diameter, and the stars, the colorful stars are 18 inches above the Lazy Susan, where all the white stars are 52 inches above the Lazy Susan. And here's what I got. So here's one exposure, and here's another exposure. And again, looks like circular star trails, but if we look carefully, uh, we have some serious problems. Uh, we have some serious overlapping overlapping star trails. And please notice that it's the colorful star trails that are overlapping the white star trails because that is due to parallax. All right, so here, here are my conclusions. And again, this is absolutely not proof, so please don't claim that I'm trying to prove anything. Um, but anyway, here's what, I, here's what I take away from this, is that circular star trails are possible with a globe Earth model. Um, and the interesting thing to me is that it didn't matter which angle I was pointing the camera, I still got circular star trails. Um, and then, of course, if we have extremely close stars, that produces overlapping star trails. So, so just maybe in the actual uh, globe Earth model, the stars are really, really far away. 
Now, here's going to be a plug for my channel. Do you like to experiment? Well, there is a Flat Earth channel that is full of experiments that you can do. I know how much Flat Earth folks love to experiment, so you might want to check out the offerings uh, on my channel. Uh, sometimes people say, well, you know, why should I look up? Um, well, there's a lot of good reasons why you should look up. One is that truth fears no investigation. So if you are genuinely, genuinely interested in the shape of the Earth, then you will uh, embrace searching for curvature as well as you will like to uh, look at the heavens and examine what you see there. And uh, I just want to give a shout out to Dr. Zach. He's, uh, he's been a very good sport in all this. Um, he's a good guy, and I strongly suggest you go to his channel and uh, subscribe to him because uh, he's a, you know, He's a good guy.